today for the public ministry soul winning lesson. We're at number 17. And we've gone through a lot of topics. How to, how not to. And I'm going to leave you to look at the other videos and the titles thereof and get them out to your friends. But today we're going to look at the 17th part of this lesson. And we're going to look at an actual biblical soul winning in practice. And if you take your Bible to Acts chapter 8, we're going to see by the Holy Spirit how it's done. And the Bible does give us a case. And in Acts 8, 26, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down to Jerusalem, unto Gaza which is a desert, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority, under the cadence, the queen of the Ethiopian, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. So here's a man, he's coming home from Jerusalem, worshiping the God of the Jews was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to, to this chariot. Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. In the place of the scripture which he read was this, he was led as a sheep through the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearers, so open he not his mouth. In his humiliation, he judged, his judgment was taken away. Who shall declare his generation? For his life was taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet? Of whom speaking the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? And Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And when they went their way, they came to a certain water. And he said, See, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and it baptized him. And when, he, and when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. So, excellent example for us. Even before Paul is saved, we see Philip, we see apostolate to, the, to Jerusalem, to the God of the Jews, on his way home with a scroll, with the scripture. And Acts 8, 27, and he rose and went, and behold, a man in Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Cadence, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge over all her treasures and come to Jerusalem to worship. Philip finds a man. He finds a religious man. He's been to a city to worship God. He's been to a temple to worship God. He's been to a place to worship God. And yet, as we've already read this story, he does not know who God is. He's reading the scripture and he says, well, who is this person? He's religious, but he doesn't know Jesus. We will meet religious people, and they don't know who Jesus is. I don't care you went to temple. I don't care you go to church. I don't care you go to hall. I don't care you go. Do you know Jesus? In Acts 8, 29. Then the Spirit said to Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. The Holy Spirit gives Philip a boost. And here is the time for Christians. We obey and we go. Or we disobey, we make an excuse. And it happens to all of us. There are 
as a born again Bible believer, there are times that the Holy Spirit says, that person right there, go, talk to him. And I'm sorry to admit that I, in my lifetime, many a time have I had the Holy Spirit say, that person. And I disobeyed and made an excuse. Don't have enough time. I don't have any tracks. Well, look at that person. A lot of times we judge the outward appearance, but God's judging the heart. And there are times they have gone, as Philip. And yes, the Holy Spirit still speaks to Christians today. Go talk to them. What's your response? What is the percentage of your response? In Acts 8.30, And Philip ran thither to him. You see, Philip went. He's gone. And heard him read the prophet Isaiah. And said, Understand thou what thou readest. Now that ran, stay in Acts 8, but Romans chapter 10, we've already been there. Romans chapter 10, verse 15, how shall they preach except they be sent? Philip, go over there to him. As it's written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. And that's what Philip's going to do. He ran with the gospel. He took his feet. The man is reading the Bible. Oh, we can find out. Philip has no idea what this guy's doing in his chariot. But as he's walking up and the Holy Spirit says, go. He's reading out loud Isaiah 53. The man has gone to service. The man has gone to church. The man is reading the Bible. Still, he doesn't know who Jesus Christ is. We can't leave off. Okay, he's reading. The, he's been to church. He's reading the Bible. Okay, Lord, we're done with him. Let's go somewhere else. Absolutely not. There's a man's lost. And this is where Philip begins. He didn't walk up to the guy, oh, nice chariot wheels. Did you get those? Those are some lovely horses you got. He hears the man and, and takes advantage. In Acts 8, 31, he said, the eunuch, how can I? Except some man should guide me. Sir, did you just not come from temple? Did you just not come from church? Did you not just have the Bible? Did you not hear preaching? There's not all Jerusalem a buzz about a man who died on a cross and they, they buried him and it is spoken about that he is alive and over 400 people have witnessed that. The Old Testament saints have come out of the grave. Isn't this great that the Pharisees and Sadducees and the scribes are still upset? The high priests are still upset. There are people who say, hey, look, I was blind. I can see. Look, I had leprosy. I'm clean. And you still don't know Jesus? We cannot take the advantage. We cannot take the association that everybody's saved. Because they're not. And this guy's honest. I'm reading the Bible, but I don't understand the Bible. And I've come across many of those people. I got a question. And Peter says we ought to be ready to give every man to ask us an answer. And a hope. Philip is going to give him an answer. He's going to give him hope. Not going to give him ball games. Not going to give him anything but Jesus. We've already read the passage. That's why I read the passage all the way through and while we're breaking it down. And he desired that Philip would come up and sit with him. He's reading. He has no understanding. And then he welcomes the soul winner. You knock on someone's door. Hi, I'm such and such. This is such and such. We're here about the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you know what? I was just reading my Bible this morning. I don't understand. Come on into my house. You may be at break at work. Hey, you know, I heard you're a Christian. And I came across this on the radio or I heard on TV or something, the Bible, something like that. Can you explain to me? Those are open doors. And they're out there. Amazing what the Lord's done with us with the flea market ministry. The open doors of people who have an open Bible. 
And then they open doors that people do not have by not having an open Bible. In Acts 32, 33, the place in Scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like the lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he his, not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So Romans 10 again. Romans 10. Romans 10, though written many, many, many years after, is parallel to this story in Acts 8. Romans 10. Let me get there. You don't need Romans 8. Romans 10, 17. So faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And he's hearing his own mouth. And he's reading out of Isaiah 53, the suffering Messiah. Man, all the great places for him to be fulfilled to open up about Jesus Christ, the Messiah himself. Now let me take time. Let's go to Isaiah 53. And let's read. Isaiah 53. Let's see what the Ethiopian eunuch was reading. What he's already read and where he uh, is caught when Philip shows up and probably what Philip read on. Who has believed our report? I have. Many don't. To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? To that Ethiopian eunuch. But he's reading that like, I don't know who he's talking about. Who is that? Philip knows. Philip has believed this report. It has been revealed to Philip. And Philip is now going to reveal to the Ethiopian, the Ethiopian eunuch where he's going to believe the report. He shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of the dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. The Ethiopian eunuch has no idea who this is. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow. And acquainted with grief. And we hid as it, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. That's Jesus. That's the Jesus who just recently died. That's the Jesus who recently was buried. That's the Jesus that's just recently risen from the grave. He with the, the, the apostles. He's with the disciples and, and 400 people. And then this is the recent Jesus that went and sent it unto the Father. Where the disciples and the apostles are going out. And preaching the gospel. This is the same place that the Ethiopian eunuch has come from. Jerusalem. It's still news. Surely he has borne our griefs. Because the news is keeping alive by the disciples and apostles. Preaching the word. He carried our sorrow. Yet we did seem him stricken. Smitten of God and afflicted. And one that raised the eyebrows. The Ethiopian eunuch. Smitten and afflicted by God. But he was wounded for our transgressions. I want you to think about his sins. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Look at, look at the sin. Iniquity, sin, transgression. All upon this one man that he doesn't know about. If the Holy Spirit was not spurking his heart. Knowing that Philip would be coming. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before. This is where Philip meets the Ethiopian eunuch. Reading out loud. He has read verses 5 and 6 about iniquity. About transgression. About sin. And in comes the preacher. To bring him Jesus. Right now, if he talked about roses and chariot wheels in the sports game, or who's playing what, or what you're going to do this weekend, what interrupted the sin, the iniquity, the transgression message that this gentleman has been reading. What an open door for Phil. Talking about Jesus. Like I said, I, I've been taught, when you go knocking on doors, which I, I don't like doing, I'm not against it. No, a marble their garden, their roses. Start off. No. Start off with Jesus. And about Jesus. You don't know how much time they'll give you. Spend the whole time talking about stupid roses, not get a chance to talk about the rose of, rose of the valley, the lily 
of the valley of the rose of Sharon. So, Acts 8.34. And the, EP, and, the, yeah, and the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh this prophet? Who speaketh the prophet this? Of himself or of some other man? What a question. This lost man is asking the right question. Philip, are you ready? I know Philip's ready. Uh, the contest with Isaiah 53, what we, what he was just reading about iniquity, about sin, about transgression, about someone being bruised, somebody being whipped, somebody being beaten. I want this Ethiopian's heart. You know, I'm a sinner. I've got transgressions. Is God gonna beat the daylights out of me? He's asking the right question. Acts 8.35 Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Romans chapter 10 again. Romans chapter 10. Verse 14 How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? The eunuch. How shall they believe Believe in him whom they have not heard. Philip's going to open his mouth. How shall they hear without a preacher? Philip is going to open his mouth. How shall they preach except they be sent? Philip, go. As is written, how beautiful the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Romans 10 played out even before Romans 10 is written. Acts 8.36 uh, Acts 8.35 And Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture, Isaiah 53. The suffering Messiah. The one who suffered and died for my sins. The one who God beat because of my sin. The one where my iniquity, my transgressions were laid upon that lamb. And preached unto him Jesus. You got the word of God. Don't hand them CDs. Don't hand them movies. Don't take them to church movie night. Take them to the Bible and the gospel. Jesus Christ suffered and died and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that is the subject of Isaiah 53 in this story. And talk about Jesus. The biblical Jesus. Philip opens mouth. Let me see that scroll, sir. Let me see Isaiah 53. Let me show you Jesus. Acts 8:36. And as they went on their way, so the chariot's moving. They're in the chariot. It's moving, and they're talking. They came onto a certain water, a body of water, and the eunuch said, "See, here is water." What does hinder me mean to be baptized? Now, when we look at this question here, we got to look at where did the Ethiopian eunuch come from? They're not Ethiopia. He just come from Jerusalem. What has happened several, several years before this event? John the Baptist shows up baptizing people. Jesus, though himself did not baptize, his, his disciples were baptized. There's a thing going on in in Jerusalem, it's called baptism. Acts 2.38, you're going to see baptism. Baptism, baptism. An Ethiopian eunuch has heard baptism. Here's Jesus, here's the open Bible. What was it? I must be baptized. Here's a body of water. And you will find people like that. Really? I got to get baptized, right? I got to go to church, right? I, I see in Facebook, you know, I'm damned if I don't go to every service in church. And we're laying the wrong aspect to the lost people. Now, we got a problem here. And here's a Bible check. Because I'm going to read to you what a modern Bible will do. Verse 36. 
a modern Bible that if this is what your Bible says, you need to throw it in the trash can and get a King James Bible. Ready? Acts 8, 36. Now pay attention with me. As they went on their way, there came unto a certain water. And the eunuch says, see, here's water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Is that what your Bible says? You got the wrong Bible. I just read to you a modern Bible. And it removed the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, you say, May, I have in my Bible 37. You didn't read verse 37. Does 37, if it's in your Bible, does it have a footnote? Believe it or not, my Schofield Bible has H. The best authorities omit, omit verse 37. 37 is the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. You're not saved by water. You're saved by blood. And modern Bibles throw it out. Modern Bibles put a footnote in there. The Schofield Bible says it ought to be omitted. Don't you dare bring someone to Jesus Christ and say the means of salvation is get in this water. Don't you dare, because they'll be damned. They'll go to hell without the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, before we look at Acts 37, let's go to Romans 10. Baptism cannot save you. It will never save you. Romans chapter 10. I may have said Acts. I'm not sure. Romans 10, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, that is what's missing. In Acts 8, 37, if it's removed, if it's been footnoted, if it's been, oh, here's a letter, it should be omitted. Not in the best sources, not in the best, not found in original. You better have 37. 37. Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, Romans 10, and thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe, Romans 10, that Jesus Christ, Romans 10, is the Son of God, Romans 10. Look at that. <clears throat> and verse 36 the Ethiopian eunuch, not knowing anything of the scriptures, not knowing anything about Jesus, he says, hey, here's a body of water. Let's get religious. You see, the religion I just came from, from Jerusalem, says, baptize. So here's a body of water. Let's do the religious thing. Philip's like, no, 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 no. I'm going to burst your bubble. I'm going to offend you. I'm going to make you upset. But I am going to take your water religion and I'm going to wash it down the road and I'm going to give you the blood of Jesus Christ, the salvation that Jesus Christ suffered and died, according to Scripture, and was buried and arose again the third day, according to Scripture. There is no water in the gospel. And yet many churches in removing verse 37 has watered the gospel down. And people who rely on the water for salvation will end up in the lake of fire that burns forever. But Lord, wasn't I baptized? Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. Better be careful. You better put that belief. You better put the blood back in. You better put the salvation in the cross. You better put Jesus Christ in the salvation. That's what Philip. Philip says, nope. I ain't going to baptize you. You've got to believe with thy heart. And the man says, I believe Jesus Christ. Now, look at verse 36. He is not saved. Verse 37. He is saved. Verse 38. Then he's baptized. But, but, no, but, but, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Let's go back to Romans 10 again. Let's go back to Romans 10. Let's look at it all laid out. And we'll start in verse 9. 
again. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead. Resurrection. First speak about the resurrection. Thou shalt be saved. And with the heart man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And the scripture saith, the scripture saith, the word of God, whosoever believes on him should not be ashamed. There's no difference between a Jew and a Greek or an Ethiopian. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, I believe Jesus is the Son of God, shall be saved. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. For they have not all obeyed our, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. Sorry, some don't. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? That's the opening of Isaiah 53. Remember that Isaiah 53 1? Paul quotes Isaiah 53 1. The Ethiopian eunuch is reading Isaiah 53. Oh, -ho. so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. All right, so let's look at the thing here. Acts 8, verse 32. He has the scripture and he's reading it. There's the word of God. Paul here, I mean, Paul, Philip hears him reading. So he is hearing himself read the scripture. Philip is invited, the preacher. Philip grabs those scriptures and shows them Jesus Christ. He is hearing the scripture. He is hearing about Jesus Christ. He is religious. He is not saved. His first thought, let's get baptized. Philip says, no. You've got to believe with thy heart. He says, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You're saved. Then we get baptized. Verse 38, and he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water. You know another thing missing in a lot of churches today in baptism? The preacher's not going down in the water with them. They got this little pool and the preacher stands on the outside not getting wet and the convert's in the, in the water. John the Baptist was in the water. Philip is in the water. Both in the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, it is you go in the water, you go under the water, you're not sprinkled with water, you're not watered gun with water, you're not shot with water, you're not sprayed with water, you go down into the water, you go under the water. That's the proper baptism. So we see in Acts 8, number one, you gotta have a you gotta have the scriptures. Number two, the guy is not saved. He's religious, he's not saved. He wants to do something religious to be saved. It is confronted, it is put down, it's not allowed. He gets and tells them what he must do to be saved. And then number two, number three, he believes in Jesus and nothing else. And only at the belief from the heart that he's believed on Jesus, then he's baptized. And the baptism is he goes under the water with the preacher there doing the service. You must have the word of God. You must have Jesus Christ. And you must believe. It must come from the heart. It must have a confession, Romans chapter 10. It's simple. It's very simple to have someone be laid to Jesus Christ as their Savior. It is very simple for someone to come to Christ as their Savior, but religion and traditions and man and history and whatever, and science and education, whatever you want to throw in there, makes it difficult. And the fact is, and the fact is, there is a means in the Bible that we are to witness. And it's laid out. 
There is no other possible way that you can do it unless you are in the modern church today. And they will do it by, and I've done it. When I was the first born babe in Christ, I say, well, I bring them to my preacher. I give them my phone number to my preacher. I, this is Jesus, but my 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 pastor can tell you more. Right, that's that's good for a new born babe in Christ. But you're going to grow and learn. Are you going to study the Bible? Are you going to try to memorize scripture? Are you going to memorize scripture so you can deal with lost people? Are you going to grow? Are you going to go to that first lost person? You're going to lose the battle. You're going to lose. But do you take what you lost and go home and study more? Listen, the first time I dealt with Jehovah Witness, you know, I just, you know, Jesus saved. I went home and studied a little bit more and now I got them mad at me. Now they'll call the cops on me. Because I've become a Bible believer. I've become a study of the Bible. I know what the doctrine says. I bring them the Bible. I'm not going to bring them to church. They're not welcome in church. If John chapter 2 says they're not to be welcome in your house, and your house is your church, and your church is supposed to be your house, why would you invite Jehovah Witnesses or Catholics to your church when they're unsaved? You know what you do when you end up with lost people in the church? You end up in the mess that the church is in today. A marriage in the world. And where Jesus Christ is outside the church knocking on the door saying, Hey, you in there! Come out here. To me. And Christians say, Oh, go to church, go to church. And Jesus, the scriptures say, Come out. And believe on me and I'll sup with you. I'll dine with you. But I ain't going in there. That's the world. That's Satan. And we have a proper way. Number one, you're going to go out soul winning, whatever you do, whatever it means. Number one, carry a King James 1611 Bible. Preferably, preferably when you're out public witnessing, a New uh, Testament uh, pretty good sized print. I've got a new, an old and new Testament, it's a good size, and I'm able to carry it in my arm. I use it for my street preacher's Bible. You can find one like that. That's great. But you don't want one. That, you don't want to carry one of those big family Bibles, <laughs> all right? And you don't want one of the little tiny ones where an ant has to wear a magnifying glass to read the word. And you don't want one that has a lot of, you want one without notes. Now, my my preacher's Bible for the streets, it, it has a center column. But if you can get away from that, and just the word, no subtitles, just chapter and verses, that would be the best. Because everything else is going to distract. You need to study the Bible yourself. You need to memorize scripture. Because you may not always be able to try to find it. Now, memorize scripture, number one. All right? Know the book, chapter, verse, and the verse. That's the best. You can do that. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 36. Oh, boy, no. Uh, all right, John 3, he that has the Son has eternal life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. I see now. I got part of that verse. Number two, okay, know where that scripture is, where if you mess up quoting it. All right, let me turn to the book and chapter. Okay, there it is. Okay. Now, there are things in, in Romans chapter 10. I mean, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, I believe in thy heart that God's raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Okay, where is, oh, what's, the, what, what's that verse mean? All shall call upon him. Not a, I don't know what that one is, but I know it's over here in Romans 10. I can't quote it, but I know where it is. 
And then number three is, okay, you can quote the verse. You quote it correctly, but you don't know where it is. Now, that's not the kind of verse you you want to use. And so, well, where's that saying in the Bible? Uh, it's in there. And believe me, I've, I've had to done that many times. I'll quote a verse and I'll say, where is that? Oh, man, why did you ask that question? All right, Holy Spirit, I know. I'm still. I make mistakes. I've done it wrong. And you learn from them. And then number, wherever we're at, carrying a Bible, studying your Bible, memorizing scriptures, you got to go. You've got to go in all the world and preach the gospel. Now, there are many avenues. There are many ways. Again, street, flea, uh, farmer's markets, parades, just a sidewalk street corner with signs, knocking on doors, nursing home, jails, Places, uh, uh, homeless places. There are many avenues you can, the Lord can open the door for you. But you got to go. And they're not going to hear if Philip go to that chariot. Philip go. Philip go. Oh, I'll go. Uh, I don't want uh, I'm busy. If Phil didn't go, that Ethiopian eunuch would never have got saved, and that would not be in your Bible. Now, Stiley, how many times did you not listen to the Holy Spirit? And in someone's life, Acts chapter 8, where it should have been your name, I'm talking to myself, because I didn't go. That is shame on me. That is blood upon my fingertips. Ezekiel. It's in Ezekiel. I take a little time to find it. The Bible says go. Too many do not. Oh, I'm waiting for God's calling. I'm waiting for God. He said go. That's plain and simple. You got to pray. Jesus said, you know, he says the fields are white unto harvest. Pray that the Lord of the ha harvest will send people. And a lot of people take that prayer. Oh, Lord, send me. No, the prayer is that the Lord will send people out. Not just you. It's thank God you're going. Thank God you're doing. But there's others who are not doing. There are others who are not going. And then you got to accept defeat. And you got to take defeat from the people are lost and go and learn where you were defeated so next time you can do better for the Lord and that's studying now let me give you another warning about that and I'm going to, I'm going to tell you as I dealt with Jehovah Witnesses back in Connecticut the Jehovah Witnesses had laid on me doctrines and issues and I, you know, I've gone home, I looked at the Bible, I studied the Bible, got on the internet, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I know this thing now. And I've dealt with countless Jehovah Witnesses. Oh, they say this doctrine they have. I'm going to nail them down. And that doctrine never comes up. But if it did, if it does, it's in my heart. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I have learned a simple thing with, with the Jehovah Witnesses who do not believe that Jesus is God and God is Jesus. And the thing I will do with Scripture, because when Satan battled Jesus after the 40 days on the mountain of uh, temptation, Jesus did this to Satan. Thus saith the Lord. The Scriptures say it. And quoted the Word of God. So when I deal with... with um, a Jehovah Witness. Okay, my question is, Thomas said, my Lord, my God. Answer that. Now, I don't know where that is, but I know it's at the end of John. And with a few flipping of pages, I can get it. But to give you the book and chapter, I mean, yeah, I mean, the chapter and the verse, I can't. But I know it's in there. I know where to find it if I got to dig it out. And I have before Jehovah Witnesses. And Roman Catholics. 
Well, doesn't the Bible say, call no man your father? Matthew. I'm a little shaky on that one, see? But I know, I know the Bible says. So when people come up to me, judge not, least ye be judged. Can you find it for me? Before you quote that verse, here's my Bible. Find it. Matthew 7, verse 1. And in the context of it's verse 1 and 2. But we've got to take the word according to Acts 8. The Ethiopian eunuch had the word. And when the Holy Spirit says go, we've got to go. I don't remember when the ministry started for my family. My daughter's very young. We started with signs. We started off at, at a courthouse. <coughs> we just sit there and hold signs. That's all we did. Got a few tracks out. I think you want a lot of tracks out. And then one day the U.S. US Marshals came. And ordered us off. And long story the short is the Holy Spirit said, Move, go, you're done there. So we went to a center island in the middle of Norwich, Connecticut, and we were there for a while. We had chairs, we sit there, hold signs. And we had sign uh, we had gospel tracks getting passed out across the street. People recognized by cars, there was a red light there. People had to slow down to merge into another lane. So we were seeing it was wonderful, great ministry there. And we had people bring us water. We had people toot it at us. We had people tell us, look up with the middle finger and stuff like that. And I've got to talk with a couple homeless men who didn't get saved. We got to talk with a couple homeless men. I said that. Uh, well, we got a lot of things. And then we got bullied by the um, Salvation Army with their huskers and all that and trying to block the word of God. We had a wonderful testimony there. And we stayed there. And the Lord said, go somewhere else. And where? So I want you to go to the local high school, which does all the area community. It's not just one city high school. It's a high school that does all. And we stood there with our signs. We got gospel tracts out. I would preach every once in a while, but really didn't do that that much then. I should say it's not at all. And we, there for, we were there for a freshman class, and we were there in their graduation. We were able to give the gospel to the, our cancer doctor. We were able to deal with kids four years from freshman, sophomore, junior, and fresh, uh, senior year. We were there for four. They came out one time. They had their signs. And the police officers came up and said, well, what do you want? Hey, they got the free right that we have. As long as they don't stand in our way, we won't stand in their way. Let them do what they need. And that only lasted one afternoon. And the Lord said, hey, time for you to pack up and go. And there's a long story about Florida. I won't get into it. But here I am in Florida. God called me to Florida twice. I'm down here. And we've had ministries all over the place. Down here. And we settled upon the farmer's market. We've been there for four years. That's my church. There are people who love me there. There are people who like me there. There are people who don't like me. There are people who hate me. There are people at the farmer's market. They love for me to preach the gospel somewhere else. There are people who thank my thank me. There are people giving us, you know, strawberries, giving us drinks and all that because we preach the gospel. And then we came across another ministry coming on a year now, the flea market. We set up a table. Now now I'm looking for more. We've got the the video ministry. We've got the YouTube. We've got the SoundCloud. We've got all the other ones that are out there. So many five, six, seven, eight other resources for these videos out there. We are now in, on SoundCloud. We picked up two top nations of Indonesia. Number one and number two, three cities. It's between America and Indonesia. And we'll get other like Korea or we'll get others like uh, Soviet Republic. We'll get uh, England. Or third spot is always a new. But we seem to be in America and in Indonesia. I've never been to Indonesia. If you show me on a map right now, I probably couldn't find it. I've made it in general area. Because the Bible says go. And if you're willing to go and you're willing to do what God wants you to do, He will open that broad. Now, let me take a few minutes to tell you how it started. 
My, I guess this is turned to my testimony. Let me tell you how this all started for me. We were at the corner of Main Street and Boswell Avenue. There's a, a kind of work. You go there, you get, you go to work that, that you go to this place that day and you get work that day uh, if they don't run out. And there's a Dunkin' Donuts. There was a tax place. There was a other, other business around here. It was, it was an active area. And a newspaper down the road a little bit. And I got out of my car. I stood on the street corner. And I'm going to preach the gospel. Bible in hand. Stepped up to that corner. Uh, no one's around. Went back to the car. Headed out with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit said, go. I said, no, no one's here. Went, stood back out in the corner, opened up my Bible, opened up my big mouth. Nah, feels stupid. Went back to the car and had it out with the Holy Spirit. I wasn't like Philip. I didn't go the first time. And this went on back and forth, back and forth. I don't know how many times I went back to the car. I wasn't like an idiot. Where's this guy? He steps up and he goes back and steps up. So finally, I stepped to the corner. And I yelled without screeching my, my throat. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have our everlasting life. And the Holy Spirit in my mouth filled with the scriptures. And let me tell you, there were people stepping out of the office behind me. There were windows open in the apartment building. I didn't even knew that were going to, that could be open. There were people stepping out of the donut shop. There were people stepping out of the storefront across the street. There were people there at the at the at the merge area. They were listening. And I told that story for one reason. What happened at Boswell and Main Street when I finally gave in to the Holy Spirit, like Philip giving the Holy Spirit, here I am today, the Holy Spirit using me. And yet, and yet, there are times when the Holy Spirit says, go, no, 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 no. I still struggle. And you'll struggle too. Let's pray for each other. Let's go out there. Stop fighting the Holy Spirit. Because you don't know wherever the ground will be called. You don't know who you're going to speak to next. You think Philip had any idea this guy was going to get saved? Can you imagine Philip? When he's walking up this chariot and to his amazement, this guy is reading the Bible? Isaiah? And the excitement that Philip would have. Hey, here's a body of water. Philip's like, e e no. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Oh, this is going to break it. He's going to go away from me. He's going to chuck me out of this chariot. But it's not baptism, sir. It's you got to believe on Jesus Christ in your heart. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And Philip probably had a heart attack. Whoa. All right, now that you believe with your heart, now let's baptize. You don't know that next person. That the Holy Spirit will bring to you. That next person may be a person that will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. But in the testimony of Stiley Hayward, sometimes the Holy Spirit says, Go, and I don't. I may have missed the opportunity of someone getting saved. Now, God will send somebody else. But why is He going to send somebody else when I'm supposed to do it? So with these videos, don't think I'm high and mighty. Don't think I'm all wonderful, powerful. I got it all. Send me all your money and I'll send you. No, 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 no. I've learned from my mistakes and I'm still making mistakes. I'm still sinning. First John 1, 9 is still there. I still have to confess my sins. I'm not perfect. Never was. And after I die or after the rapture, then I will be at the judgment seat of Christ. But I'm taking the issues that I've learned in I don't know how many years. 10, 11, maybe 12 years. I want to see you. 
You're right. Well, see, you get these videos out. Tell your friends. Show your friends. Get them out. They're free. They're on copyright. Put them out. Get them on Facebook. Get them on Twitter. Get them on YouTube. Get them anywhere and everywhere. You want to put them on whatever you want to do. I give you free permission. But if you misuse it, you stand before God one day. But if you use it to God's honor and glory, amen. Amen. I know what people can do with these videos. I know they can erase, change, edit, cut. Oh, well. But I know there's a few people out there who use them for good.